Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I got up this morning, I really wasn't sure what I was gonna do for today's video, and then I opened up my email. When I opened up the email, I found out that one of my regular viewers, Susan Flanagan, had sent me a really nice PayPal contribution and also a very, very nice note. Uh, since yesterday was Easter and that was the day she sent her a contribution, uh, she wished me a happy Easter, of course, and then uh, told me that if she lived closer to me, that she would buy me a yellow rose of Texas for my house. And I thought to myself, you know what, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm going to use that money and I'm going to go out and buy a yellow rose bush and put it in my yard. In fact, I know exactly where I'm going to put it. Rose bushes are sun lovers, so they need an area where there's a lot of sunshine. And that can sometimes be a challenge in my yard because there's a lot of big trees that kind of cast a big, cast a shadow everywhere. But there's one area in the yard where there actually was a rose bush when I moved in, but uh, apparently it had died. It died before I even moved into the house. And so I cut it back a few months ago and never really did anything with the area. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out what's left of that rose bush and we're gonna plant a yellow rose bush. Uh, paid for by Susan. Um, I'm also going to replace the tomato plants. Uh, unfortunately, the seedlings I grew didn't, uh, didn't make it. So I'm also going to go out and get some new tomato plants and we're going to put those in the ground. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's go to the nursery. Yeah, this is my sad tomato garden. Yeah, a couple of plants are still sort of alive, but they definitely are not thriving. And most of them just died off completely so uh, we're gonna replace those today we're gonna get two different varieties like I had here originally uh, and th actually buying new tomato plants and putting them in this time is gonna allow me to correct a mistake I made when I originally planted the uh, tomatoes you remember there were two varieties there were the small tomatoes and there were giant beefsteak tomatoes well I kept them separated when I first started growing them but unfortunately when I transferred them into the secondary thing into the secondary pan uh, to put to allow them to get some sunlight. I mixed them up. I don't remember which ones are the little ones and which ones are the big ones. So they were all just kind of haphazardly put in here and uh, buying new tomato plants is going to definitely allow me to correct that problem. Because what I'll do is I'll just uh, put, uh, you know, I'll buy them and I'll keep them separate when I plant them and I'll do it right this time. So since I've got uh, 18 stakes here, I'm gonna go buy 18 plants. Uh, it'll be uh, 12 of one type and 12 of the, or 9 of one type and 9 of the other type or who knows maybe I'll buy a, a third type of tomato and we'll mix it up that way um, now as for the jalapenos and the habaneros they continue to do well so we're just gonna let them keep going and uh, in the future when we do gardening we may just buy the plants uh, as seedlings and put them in the ground uh, it was fun to try the growing them from seeds but yeah, you know, it didn't work in this case. So, well, it worked It worked with the jalapenos, but it didn't work with the tomatoes. So, like I said, off to the nursery. All right, I just checked out at the nursery. Um, I got about four different varieties of tomatoes. Um, actually, they, they recommend that you plant these about three feet apart. So, rather than putting 18 of them in there, there's only gonna be eight in there. So I got eight different ones, or eight, eight plants. Uh, like four different varieties so uh, we'll see what happens it's gonna be four uh, large beefsteak type tomatoes and then four cherry sized tomatoes and I think that'll be great in there um, maybe I won't be overwhelmed with uh, the tomatoes I also found a Julia child rose bush that will have nice uh, beautiful yellow flowers and we are gonna put that in the front yard and uh, then I also got some uh, rose uh, rose food so uh, Let's get home, put this in the ground. So this is the rose bush that I told you about. Like I said, it was, uh, it was a full size rose bush, but it was completely dead. So I just kind of cut it back to this and I haven't really done anything with it uh, in the area. So um, this is gonna come out and we are gonna put this one in in its place. And this one's supposed to get five to six feet tall. So it should fill in this area real nice and should have some really pretty yellow, uh, yellow uh, blooms. So. Let's get, let's start by digging this out. It's always amazing to me how well the weeds do here. You don't have any problems uh, keeping them alive. You know, they just kind of go all over the place here, but you try and grow something normal here and you get a little bit of freeze and boom, that's the end of it. Now I'm gonna have to be really careful when I uh, plant this because 
there's a sprinkler head here and since I didn't install the sprinkler system here I have no idea where the sprinkler lines are underground so we'll have to be real careful so that I don't hit them because I don't want to have to do a sprinkler line repair today that's not what uh, that's not on the agenda all right, it came out pretty easy. There was one kind of big root that I had to cut, but once I got through that, it just kind of came out by hand. Um, I think what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna kind of try and clean up this area a little bit here. Uh, clear out all the weeds. Also, uh, all these rocks uh, turned up when they had to tunnel under the house, and this kind of ended up being the place where they kind of just threw all the rocks, and I wanna get rid of that. Now, this is kind of an interesting uh, example of some of the geology of this area. Um, you got to remember about a hundred thousand years ago, Texas was at the bottom of a very shallow sea. Because uh, basically, North America at that point, uh, uh, kind of the whole middle of the country was uh, inundated with uh, ocean water. And so what we have here is uh, uh, you get just a foot or so underground and you get a lot of like limestone deposits. And that's what we're seeing here. This is a, uh, this was all pulled out of the ground when they, uh, when they uh, did the digging, you know, it's kind of just a chalky, soft kind of stuff, but it kind of made the job uh, a little less pleasant. But I don't, what I want to do is get a lot of that out of here today, and uh, you know, maybe we can put some more stuff in this area and make it look real nice in here. All right, we got the rose bush in the ground, gave it a nice, good drink, uh, gave it some plant food, and we'll see what happens. Um, I'm halfway wondering if some of that limestone that I told you about a little earlier maybe uh, kind of hindered this thing growing a little or hindered the previous one growing a little bit. So I got in there with a digger bar and kind of dug out a lot of that limestone. You know, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a layer, you know, three or four inches thick. And then once you get through it, it's uh, just normal soil again. So I kind of broke it out of there and uh, hopefully that'll allow the roots to go deep and... Uh, maybe give this thing a better chance of surviving. So that's in the ground. Looks like it's gonna be ready to go here and let's move into the backyard and plant us some tomato plants. All right, so here's how I'm basically gonna lay all these out. Um, as I said before, I got four plants that are gonna grow large tomatoes and they're gonna be like beefsteak type tomatoes. And I got two different varieties. So they got the two in the front here, which uh, they call tomato 444. Uh, the two in the middle here, which are called uh, Tomato Super Fantastic. And then I got four tomato plants in the back that'll grow smaller kinds of tomatoes. And those are called uh, uh, Tomato Sun Sugar. So uh, they're gonna be in the back and then the bigger ones and they'll be on the front. And we'll keep, kinda keep everything in order this time. So it'll be easier to uh, you know, know what I got. Because like I said, I got them all mixed up before and I had the two different tomatoes tomato plants growing together now that wouldn't have been a problem except for the fact that I kind of like to keep things in order so I know what's where and I know what's coming from what plant and that was that was impossible so uh, I'm also I think I'm going to color code the uh, the stakes because I got three different colors stakes so what I'll probably do is uh, plant certain kinds of tomatoes with you know the first kind of tomatoes will be with one of the color stakes the second uh, row will be another color and then the four in the back that are the same thing they'll be with a third color maybe i'm just a little ocd or something like that but whatever i'm going to do that all right about half an hour has passed now i got all the plants in there got them all staked up uh, color coded all the stakes so they're nice and pretty here it was something it was interesting when i was planting these plants here I uh, was looking at the tags on this one, and I saw that this one uh, says that it's edible. It's like, oh man, I'm going on the assumption that they're all edible. So, I don't know, we'll see. When I start eating my own tomatoes, uh, you know, those don't say edible on them. So if I start eating my own tomatoes and all of a sudden the vlog stopped, you'll, you'll know what happened. All right, anyway, I'm gonna water these things. Um, these are a little bit healthier plants now, so I'm just gonna turn the sprinkler on. Um, I know you're not really supposed to do that kind of midday because the water gets on the leaves and kind of uh, then when the sun beats down on it, it uh, kind of damages the leaves. But it's kind of overcast right now and kind of windy. So I think if I give it a little bit of a drink right now, um, I think the wind will kind of blow the water off and I think we'll be all right. So let's give these things a nice healthy drink and uh, we'll go on from there. I think I also got to kind of mow the lawn, uh, at least out in the front today. 
Um, we're starting to get a little warmer out here these days and as a result the lawn is starting to grow again. I know I just did it a couple weeks ago but gotta do it again. Also gonna have to get out there and try and get a handle on some of the weeds. I got some weeds in the yard that I'm gonna have to deal with. Uh, so I'm gonna probably get like a, one of those sprayer attachments that you can spray for uh, a wide variety of weeds and get them all in one shot. But I gotta figure out what kind of grass I have. There's different types of grass and depending on the, on the type of grass, you need to use different types of uh, weed or, end up, or else you'll end up a you know, weed killer or else you'll end up uh, killing your lawn too. So I think I gotta figure out what I got, but uh, that shouldn't be too terrible and difficult. I'll probably just shoot a photo of it and take it down to you know, a gardener or someone and have them uh, identify the species. But anyway, I'm gonna do the lawn and then I'll catch up with you a little later. So a couple of hours have passed by now and I went over to Home Depot because one of the things I want to do is deal with some of these patchy spots in the front yard. Um, you may recall a few months ago I had to replace a sewer line or a part of the sewer line and this is one of the bad areas right here because this is where they basically put all the fill dirt. They put a tarp on top of here and this was buried under you know three feet of uh, soil for a little bit more than a week and the lawn that I have here is uh, called St. Augustine. Now St. Augustine is a great lawn it's a little bit on the pricey side and it's kind of high maintenance but the the beauty of it is that it's really designed to deal with a lot of heat and a lot of humidity that, like you get down here in the Gulf States. So uh, that's a good lawn to have here. The problem is it isn't really good when you walk on it a lot and it doesn't handle uh, being pummeled a lot and so unfortunately this is where uh, where like I said the fill dirt was put and then uh, they were walking back and forth uh, over here because uh, this is also you know more area here where they were walking and this is where they were tunneling under the other side of the house because they actually tunneled from two sides and kind of met in the middle and so you know there was fill dirt here and so it got a lot of damage and so one of the things I want to try and do is see if I can figure out how to patch this and bring it in uh, one of the things that's supposedly really great about this St. Augustine uh, grass is if you do take care of it it grows really thick and it tends to choke out the weeds well since I haven't had it grow uh, growing very well lately um, the weeds have kind of taken over so I just uh, got back and did a weed treatment out here and hopefully we'll kill off all the weeds and then I'm going to try and put some mulch down in this area and see if we can get it to kind of bounce back. One of the strengths of the St. Augustine grass is that it uh, will re recover and rebound really quickly if you give it a chance and you can see it's trying to do it There's all sorts of little patches here where it's trying to grow back in this was completely bare a couple months ago And so I've got some like mulch material that will kind of maybe protect the ground a little bit and maybe give it a better chance to bounce back so um, But before I did that I did a weed treatment out here because I like I said I got to kill off all the weeds So we're gonna give it a week or two and let I'll let all the weeds die off and then we're going to try and recover, um, you know, and, and uh, restore this area so we get rid of the patchy near areas here and make this look like a nice lawn again. This was such a beautiful lawn when I moved in and, uh, well, there were a couple of problems. Uh, uh, in addition to the, the sewer line issue, for a while I didn't have the sprinklers working properly. The timer, everything worked properly, but for some reason the timer didn't make the sprinklers go on when they were supposed to so for a couple weeks until I discovered the problem the lawn wasn't getting watered and that didn't help matters either because you know that was in July and that's like the hottest part of the year and you know if you're gonna keep a lawn alive you gotta keep it watered so um, I have re repaired that problem now and that isn't an issue anymore but you know the combination one-two punch between the uh, the sewer line issue and the no water for a long period of time really took its toll on this lawn and I really want to try and get it back now so that's gonna kind of be the task for the next couple weeks uh, but like I said I've done a weed treatment now so we're gonna give that a couple weeks to kind of kill everything off that doesn't belong here and then we can try and 
get this lawn looking beautiful again. And it completely blows me away how fast these trees come back. This tree was completely bare a few weeks ago and it's at full growth again, as are most of the other trees in the backyard. They're doing really, really well right now. And just a couple weeks ago, this tree, I was convinced it died because it just was completely bare, but even it's coming back. Now the pecan trees in the front yard, they still look pretty bare, but you know, they're starting to come back now a little bit too. I guess they just start uh, budding out a little bit later in the year. So, you know, it's gonna be a year or two before I kind of get the hang of uh, how all of the trees in here respond. Um, I honestly figured when I pulled the pole cover off, uh, you know, in uh, February, whenever it was, that that was done. And then that tree right above it began dumping its leaves. So, you know what, it's gonna be all a matter of learning how all the individual trees and plants in here respond to the changing seasons you know i've never really had to deal with it that much in california because there weren't really that extreme of seasons but uh we get them here and apparently last year was a well this year was a very extreme season but it's good to see everything's bouncing back and this tree is going to be nice and full and thick uh probably just in a matter of a few weeks so there we go so anyway, uh, this I think we've come to the end of our vlog. This is uh, this is the uh, yellow rose of Texas. It was given to me by Susan. So thank you so much, Susan. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what this does. And uh, I think that's all that I have for today. So thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.